reminds me back of my disco DJ days. I want everybody to take nine steps forward. And I reserve the right to have you take two steps. Keep going. There's all these people in the back. You just can't imagine. I'm just streaming in. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. And I'd like to welcome all of you to Brembo's new North American headquarters and our new R&D center. And thank you all for coming. Fantastic day. I wouldn't have known it from last night. Even this morning was a little bit iffy. Fantastic cars. Fantastic customers and supplier partners here today. And of course, uh, we have this fantastic new home. And before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of people who uh, worked on this project with us and really did a marvelous job. Uh, Gary Roberts uh, and his team from the Demadia Group. Gary, are you around somewhere? And there he is. Paul and Jamie Millspaw, I think she was here earlier, I'm not sure, from Newman Smith, who was our interior designers. They really did a fabulous job here, did a, did a great thing for us. They unleashed uh, uh, a lot of ideas that we had and uh, made it real. And so I'd like uh, everybody here to give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> You know, while Brembo is a company that projects a great image, um, that image would be nothing without the support of 5,400 Brembo Associates globally. Uh, 370 employees are now here in North America. And while it's great to have a great place to work like this, it's even better to have a great team to work with. So before we get started with our ceremony, I'd like to introduce some of the key members of the Brembo North America leadership team, which I have the pleasure of working with every day. And first uh, is Adrian Smith, who heads up our systems group. Adrian. Mark Olson, who heads up the disc group. Bill Hartwig, our PGA Pro and Director of Program Management. Jim Kanji, our Racing Director. Jim Hodgman, who heads up HPK, our High Performance Kit Group. Jason Wolf, who is the Homer Operations Plan Manager. Jason. Senor Leonel Duran from our Monterey, Mexico plant manager. Kevin Duda, our director of purchasing and logistics. And all of these cast of characters are supported by our, uh, our CFO, the man with the money, Christian Beretti. Sean Bowen, our HR director, got to have the right name. And Chris Irving, our uh, IT director, who manages it all. Thanks, guys. It's a great team to work with, and now we have a great, great building to put them in. Uh, for many years, you know, Brembo was known as a specialty high-performance products manufacturer, some of the world's most prized vehicles, some of them right outside the door here. Everybody knows this uh, probably for uh, Ferraris and Porsches. Uh, but today, many of you be, probably would be very, very surprised about a few facts about this specialty brake company. First of all, this company has won well over 200 car and motorcycle racing championships since 1973, including 11 straight 24-hour Le Mans events, one of the oldest sports car races uh, in the world. We also supply 38 of 43 cars racing every weekend in NASCAR's Sprint Cup. We've equipped one of every six cars at this year's North American Auto Show. Just about every high-performance vehicle had Brembo product on that car. We've won more supplier awards for innovation and quality than any other company in the aftermarket. Kind of a surprise. And we're the largest manufacturer of brake discs and drums for all segments of cars and trucks throughout the world, producing brakes for vehicles like the Chrysler minivan, Jeeps, Ford Fusion, GM heavy duty truck pickups, and your local post office delivery vehicle. 
Didn't know those had Brembo on it, did you? And of course, there were still on Ferraris, Porsches, Aston Martins, BMW, Mercedes. So I want you all to turn around, look outside, look in that driveway, you'll see Brembo brakes. But I want you to look a little bit further, look at all those cars that you guys drove in here today. Those have Brembo product on it too. That's Brembo today. It's a great thing. While we have sales and engineering presence in the U.S., and we always had very strong sales and engineering group, uh, today is about a new commitment that we have to North America. And that commitment is not only to just be a sales and engineering presence, if you will, but we want to offer a full array of specialty services from design, development, manufacturing, to OE replacement parts for, for all the vehicles that we supply. And all of that will be on top of a very, very diversified global customer base. Not just Europeans, not just Americans, and not just Asians, all three. It's going to be very, very exciting for us. Our team in this headquarters and R&D center will work hand in hand, day to day with our team in Italy, and will foster the advancement of state-of-the-art products such as aluminum calipers and lightweight rotors. And these products will not only be technically advanced, our customers will be glad to hear this, they'll be competitively priced and they'll support our customers' needs for effective cost savings. I think everybody realizes we have to have that. And yet, we're going to have a green side to us, too. All this lightweight product that we're going to have is, help, is going to help the environment. We're going to reduce those CO2 emissions. And as I just mentioned, we'll not only engineer and develop these products, um, we'll have full capability to manufacture those products here. With the purchase of Hayes Leverance's Automotive Brake Components Division in November of 2007, we positioned Brembo to be able to manufacture close to all of our North American customers from two strategic locations, Homer, Michigan and Monterey, Mexico. And today I'm pleased to formally announce that our Homer, Michigan plant, which already makes close to 8 million rotors per year, utilizing state-of-the-art automated manufacturing processes, We'll begin production of corner modules and caliper assemblies for high performance vehicles starting in the fourth quarter of this year. Some good news for the Michigan economy for a change. Great, thanks. So this is the Brembo of the future and we're celebrating that future today. So we're glad to have you here. We're very excited about North America and I hope everyone today will have an opportunity to learn more about our company. Lots of products on display, lots of vehicles with products on display. And if you already haven't done so, we're giving tours after the presentation, have you take a spin around the building, take a look at all the cars, show you what the products are. They're really, uh, you look out there and they may look like the same product on every vehicle out there. Tim Brewer knows this, they're not all the same, he knows. Um, a lot of little differences and things, and uh, we'd be glad to explain it to you. So grab somebody with a red shirt. And take you around the building, it's a good thing. All right? So thanks for coming. For me, I want to give you a different perspective of our products. So I'm going to bring up somebody here who's had a uh, personal perspective uh, in using Brembo brakes, and he's used them for probably a lot longer and uh, probably a lot more seriously than anyone here under some very, very extreme conditions. Tim Brewer is one of the most successful crew chiefs in NASCAR history. He has 53 wins, 55 poles, and two NASCAR Cup Series championships. Tim's worked with some of the greatest NASCAR drivers of all time, including three-time NASCAR champions Kale Yarborough and Daryl Waltrip. It doesn't sound the same when I say those names. Uh, I don't have the I don't have the the rock, the rock, the rock by talking about it. Anyway, as well as 1988's champion Bill Elliott, among others, Tim joined ESPN in 2007 and reports weekly from the Emmy-winning ESPN Craftsman Tech Garage during race telecasts. Uh, Tim's extremely knowledgeable about NASCAR and knows what it takes to be a true competitor in the sport. I think the I had a long conversation with Tim last night at dinner to try to figure out what else he likes to do. And I think uh, the only thing he likes to do more than working with NASCAR and the teams is talking about NASCAR and the teams. Um, although I think this TV thing he really, really likes. So uh, without further ado, I'll give you Tim Brewer. And uh, Tim, it's all yours. for allowing me to come up today. Uh, ESPN, Craftsman Tech Garage, and our partners, we've got Goodyear, we've got Chevrolet, but we have Brembo. 
You know, we had a great association, and it's like I keep telling Jim Conti, the only way you get out of the deal is you've got to die or I die. But uh, we've got a great association. We've had a lot of very, very uh, good history with NASCAR. We've had some bad moments at times, but uh, we work with some of the best people in the world. Cale Yarborough, he was one of the greatest race driver drivers in the round. As far as Bill Elliott, really knowledgeable guy, laid back, could get it done. Darrell Walter, super people, knew how to win races, knew how to take advantage of situations. We have a lot of fun working with those guys. You take Tim Richmond, for instance. He was he was a guy, he couldn't tell you a front sway bar from an axle, but when you put him in that race car, he could get it done. We work with guys like that, but the guys that really help you work in the environment, like a Darrell Walter, a Bill Elliott, great chassis guys. They can help you make the car better. And it's like the team. When you turn around and there's a guy standing beside of you, and I ran that Budweiser team at Junior Johnson's for 12 years. That guy with that red shirt standing beside of you, he was a guy that you literally went to war with every race. And you respected those guys, you trusted them because they were your partners. I see a lot of red shirts here. It tells me you guys got a great team. You know, talking with Dan last night, we have a really good association with our team members at ESPN. We move about 250 people around every week to do an event. And it's something fabulous to see because you walk in a TV compound, you see a lot of cable on the ground. And it goes out to millions and millions of people. And I used to get really uptight when, you know, before you'd go on, hey, bro, you got to do this, you got to do that. And the guys mess with you a little bit. They'll give you, say, 45 seconds to do it here. The next thing you know, hey, Brewer, can you get us out here in 15 seconds? And they're talking to you while you're talking to a crowd. So that's a little challenging at times, but we've had a great association with our team members over the years. And to be perfectly honest, we had a lot of success on that side. And to retire and, you know, just kind of like go to Ocean Isle Beach and try to retire, it's, it's not very rewarding because you don't feel like you're finished. So to have an opportunity to come back and go to work for ESPN, and I was, my boss man is Rich Feinberg. He explained to me about two weeks after we started doing this program, he said, Brewer, you're not talking to the crew chief, the owners, the drivers, the mechanics. Your responsibility is to the race fan sharing your experiences and making sure that when somebody picks up the remote control, we want them to turn the volume up and listen to you rather than change the channel. That gives us an opportunity to make race fans out of our viewers. And that's what we're all about. But as far as coming in here today and talking with you people, we have a great time doing that because a lot of people come into the Craftsman Tank Garage and they're kind of intimidated with all the buttons, bells, and whistles. And, you know, we have uh, the, the screens that we can blow the engines up any way we want to. Matter of fact, we've got some new animation coming that Brembo is going to supply us, especially when we go to Watkins Glen, Martinsville, Richmond, Virginia, some of the heavy braking racetracks. And we're going to have an opportunity working with Jack and some of the guys to where we can bring some animation. And my job, we sell it to the producers because like last weekend, when we were in uh, Wisconsin, I taped a lot of material and sent up there. But when you have an opportunity to show the fan how fast the cars are running, the speed that they're at, the brake pressures that they apply, the amount of energy that it takes to stop that race car, because it weighs 3,600 pounds. And when it's running 200 mile an hour, when you get to that corner, it needs to be running 120. You bring a lot of information to that. But Sonoma, California, you know, they've got a lot of animation now that we're going to, you got that roll? But, but the animation shows the fan exactly what the cars are going through, the amount of heat that's built up in the rotors. And then it's like I tell people, these are the most difficult cars in the world to drive. They don't have 4,000 pounds of downforce. They don't have 1,000 horsepower. These guys, and you know, it's the most difficult task in the world, but showing the commitment that Brembo has to this particular series is phenomenal because years ago, when I was in Watkins Glen, in New York, I was, had the Budweiser team with Terry Levine. I had this guy named Bill Elliott. He was absolutely kicking our butt with horsepower. But they set the speed traps up on the backstretch. Bill went through them at like 170 miles an hour. 
The problem was when he got to the turn, he wound up in the tire barrier. Well, we had Terry Labonte. We sat on the pole. Our track speed was like eight miles an hour slower, but I had the best brakes in the world on the car, and my car drove better, and we beat him around the racetrack by two and a half seconds. So, you know, when he came to work for me at the Budweiser team in 1992, he said, Brewer, how do you approach this deal? He said, Ernie, he kept the spoiler laid down, kept the drag out of the car, didn't want you to turn the steering wheel, and didn't want to turn a lot of RPMs. I said, Clyde, we don't race that way at Junior Johnson's. We turn a lot of RPMs, stand that spoiler straight up, and you better stand on that brake pedal if you're going to get stopped going in the corner. So we've learned to utilize everything we wanted to do to try to win the race. But we had a great time with those guys. We, we have a better time in the Craftsman Take Ride. Because like Dan said earlier, I really love talking about racing because I love our sport. But when we have an opportunity to share that information with our fans, I get stopped in airports, grocery stores, and people go, hey, bro, I learned everything I know about racing on account of you. I go, hey, wait a minute, time out. Don't blame that on me. But uh, we have a good time with it. And as far as uh, talking about the sport, it's what we do because every team in the garage area, when they come to the Craftsman Tech Garage, this is the commitment that ESPN has made to your team and your sponsor to get the word out about your product. It doesn't matter if it's Goodyear, Brembo, Chevrolet, or, you know, we've got the Toyota people that come in occasionally and want to know what's going on in our life. And you're going to see a lot more activity in the Craftsman Tech Garage because with the animation that we've got with the brakes and we've got a brand new cutaway engine coming from Chevrolet, and uh, it's going to be a good, good scenario. But when everyone comes into the Craftsman Tech Garage, you know, I can sit there and do my spill on everything and anything in it. Talk about whatever you want to talk about as far as race cars are concerned. But everyone that comes in there has a question. So, you know, I, I told Dan and the guys, I said, the, the main thing I want to do here, if you've got any questions that we might, you know, want to answer, hey, shoot them up here and let's talk about them a little bit and just kind of open it up to the floor. Have at it. Because arguably brakes are priority one for teams. Here's our two doors. Today we're in Fortville, North Carolina, home of Brembo Racing. Why are we in Brembo? Because we're going to Marshville, Virginia. And you go to Marshville, Virginia, if you don't have the most enormous brakes and the best brake package on the planet, you're not going to have a chance to win a race. As a rule, we roll off in a place like Atlanta or Charlotte. We've got pretty much small brakes on the car. The difference here, little bitty pads. Going into Martinsville, in the front, we've got this enormous pad. This is what we would normally have. I want you to look at these rotors. This is a small rotor that we could run on the rear of a gut car. This thing is not going to stop a lot because you don't use a lot of brakes at, at Charlotte, Atlanta, places like that. Conventional stopping stuff. Now check this rotor out. This rotor weighs 13 pounds, but the one we're going to select for Martinsville weighs 24 pounds. A lot of stopping power, and that's what you have to have because these cars don't stop in the middle of the corner. The drivers are always complaining about it. won't turn, won't turn. And as long as you got your foot on that brake pedal, it's not going to turn. What you're going to be doing is generating a lot of heat. The rotor you see right here, the beat of the tire sits right in this area. This rotor is 1,300 degrees. That's going to build up the air pressure in the car. Therefore, it's not going to have as much handling characteristics as you'd like for because you want the car to rotate in the center of the corner. How does the driver change the rotation of the car? He can come over here to the pedal assembly. This is what you see beneath the dash of the car. He has a knob on the dash. He can actually change the brake pressure from the front of the car to the rear of the car by manipulating this knob. What it's doing is changing the mechanical aspect from this master cylinder over to this side. So when you see that driver constantly on that brake pedal, stopping that race car, he's wearing out all the brake pads on the car, 
But when he gets himself in a situation where he gets too much air pressure build up in the front tires, he's going to train just right here to the rear. And what that's going to do is let the car rotate through the corner. But keep in mind, folks, all this brakes, all this package is the best stuff on the planet. And you got to have this stuff to win a race at Martinsville. Martinsville history goes way back. I remember calling Jim Conji one morning. I said, hey, Conji, the guys want something, you know, for, for Martinsville. And he goes, hey, what can we do? I said, I don't know, spread some stuff out there. And I think I got it about 20 seconds in the one, and some guy drove by the back of it. So we had to stop it and do it. Anyway, we got lucky. We did that in the second take. And Conji went, I thought we were going to be here all day. I said, yeah, we're doing this deal. I thought we were too, but we get lucky occasionally. So, so that's the good aspect of it. But uh, like I said, we really enjoy talking about NASCAR, our product. We're really enthused about it. You know, Larry McReynolds, he's the big Fox guy. He used to be my truck driver when I started Blue Max Racing with Raymond Beagle and Tim Richmond in 1983. Jeff Hammond, he used to weld radiators for me at Junior Johnson's. Those guys have been in the business for about 10 years. I've been in it four years. I'm behind, but I'm catching up pretty quick. But let me tell you, as far as a crew chief, you go to the racetrack, just try to set on the pole, lead the most laps, win the race, that way you go home with the trophy and the cash. That's great. But it's just as competitive at what I do now is what I did then. And the words of Brian France, when he first came into my tech garage, he looked around and went, holy cow, bro, you're kicking the butt over here, just like they did over there. And that's what we hope to continue to do. Just like if you're a brake manufacturer, a tire manufacturer, you've got to surround yourself with great people, you've got a great staff here. We look forward to working with Brembo for many years to come. And thank you very much for having me today. to mention one person, but since we went through the, the regular group, after you get worn out from the regular group, you go to the aftermarket guys, right? So, forgot to introduce Bert Sanders, who runs our aftermarket group. I don't know how I forgot you, Bert. One of those cars out there is Bert's, but I won't tell you which one it is. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> All right, before we do our official uh, ceremony where we'll cut our ribbon and uh, officially open our new headquarters, I'd like to personally thank a couple people who helped us uh, get this event together. Uh, that first person is uh, Caroline Falera, our communications manager. Thank you for your time. Also, our executive assistant, Sherry Steele and Virginia Johnson, did a great job. Thank you for goes into making sure everything gets where it needs to get. Who do you think the luckiest guy is here today, other than me? The luckiest guy today is the award goes to Ben Cole because he got to drive every one of those cars out there in park box. So, uh, yeah, great day. All right, so I'm going to ask my staff if we could to go over to our ribbon. Um, I think, Tim, I hope you'll join us. i got my scissors. you got yours. 